Dixon's eyes filled with tears when he saw Barton enter with his purchases. He understood it all and longed to be once more in work that he might help in some of these material ways. But though silver and gold he had none, he gave heart service and love works of far more value. The two men, rough tender nurses as they were, lighted the fire. The children clamoured again for bread, but this time Barton took a piece first to the poor, helpless, hopeless woman who still sat by the side of her husband, listening to his anxious, miserable mutterings. She took the bread, but could not eat. She was past hunger. She's well nigh clemmed, said Barton. Folks do say one mustn't give clemmed people much to eat, but bless us, she'll eat naught. Barton was now left alone with a small child, the fainting, dead-like woman, and the sick man, whose mutterings were now rising up into screams and shrieks of agonized anxiety. He carried the woman to the fire and chafed her hands. He looked around for something to raise her head. There was literally nothing but some loose bricks. Taking off his coat, he covered them with it as well as he could. He carried her feet to the fire. Then he began with the useful skill of a working man to make some gruel. He forced one or two drops between her clenched teeth. The mouth opened mechanically to receive more and gradually she revived. It was now high time to attend to the man. He lay on straw so damp and moldy, no dog would have chosen it. As he restlessly tossed to and fro, his covers fell off and left him shivering, despite the burning heat of his skin. Every now and then he rose up in his naked madness, but he soon fell again in exhaustion. 